everyone in celebration of the release of the Matt Reeves, The Batman. We're going to do something a little bit special for this Friday's unboxing and review. We're going to take a look back at a you know, pretty old figure and the previous DCEU Batman. We're going to take a look at the Hot Toys BVS Batfleck. Uh, the Van Affleck Batman. Let's go! Okay, so yeah, something a little bit special from one of our Panker's personal collections, unsealed since first release. So yeah, let's open it up and take a look at the box. Ooh, look at this box, ladies and gentlemen. It's a really nice uh, bit of artwork here. Uh, you have Batman across here. You get the little triangle for a nice view of Gotham. Little uh, lot of action shots of that flick. Close up, you made an action shot there. The BBS logo here. Really nice, really, really nice. And the top here. Again, you have BVS, which is very, very cool. Uh, on the side here, so I have in really small print, movie masterpiece, 342. Batman, six scale, collectible figure. Very nice, and especially like the texture of this box as well. It's got this kind of like the cape of the suit uh, I was trying to emulate. Just really, really cool. Look around here. Nice. Unfortunately, it's suffered a dent while thinking storage or something. But you know, still pretty good. Pretty good. It's a historical relic. Very nice. So let's take it open. Ooh. Nice here. Over here, you have a close up of Batflick. Very, very nice. And the credits of people who are sculpted this figure, you know, Howard Chan, blah, blah, blah. I think JC Hong was in the. Oh, JC Hong, yeah, JC Hong was working hot at this time. Very nice. So let's take the side open. And let's take a look at the accessories. Ugh. Okay. First impressions are oh, this is a pretty impressive little back room. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the accessories first. And then we'll take a closer look at Batfleck. All right, so we'll see y'all later. Okay, so we have all the accessories laid out here. Let's first take a look at the main sort of weapons. It comes with, it comes with a grapple launcher. Again, look pretty nice. And some weathering down here and there. Some, uh, some, some of these metal bits picked out in silver. The grip is picked out in brown paint. Yeah, pretty cool standard Batman accessory. And to go with the launcher, you get two grapple lines. One is straight, and one is bent. So it's like he just fired it, you know, if you wanna do that. And one is open. You know, one of the grapple claws. So yeah, you get Okay. I'm not sure what these are. These are still the grapple lines, but you know, still the grapple hooks. But yeah, you get an open one and you get closed ones. So, the, so these, I think, only fit in the barrel. Yeah, these only fit in the barrel. They go about here. Again, after the instructions properly. But yeah, pretty nice, pretty nice. And the grapple line goes in this slot here. Yeah. Like that, and you can see, pretty nice little connection, but the material is made out, I think it's just a very long piece of plastic or piece of metal. I think it's metal. You can hear it clink. So these will probably be pretty strong, but don't have to bend them or also break them. Yeah, pretty nice. Grapple. Grapple. So yeah, two grapple lines, grapple launcher. And well, relevant to this version of Batman, is the bat brand yeah he marks criminals or people he wants to 
what's killed in prison because Batman is a bit of a weirdo. But yeah, the Bat brand is pretty cool. Pretty nice. But still, really worth the Batman hat. And another worth the Batman hat is this gun. <laughs> Uh, this uh, kryptonite grenade launcher. Again, you know, some pretty nice weathering details. It's pretty cool looking. Again, for once it's versus just an M203. Sort of snuck into a rail. <laughs> and they've got speckling and weathering on them. Which is a really nice stuff. I mean, just look at these. The panel line, the washing. Oops. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And they are really sharp as well. You can probably poke an eye out of these things. Yeah, five batarangs. There you go. Well, uh, let's take a look at these other accessories, uh, which are the hands and some of the face parts. So, you get five hands, but not equal pairs of hands. So, you get a uh, set two left hands and four pairs of right hands. So, which is very interesting. Uh, you get two sets of open hands, at least these match. Again, picked out in black, and the knuckle areas are picked out in very nice gold. Just look at that. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Seriously. And they are, well, not just like straight gold, there's some like smudging on, on it. Which is really cute. And the hands. I sculpted very nicely. Got the glove there is here. Pretty nice, pretty nice. And you get uh, this one. I'm guessing this is like a trigger finger hand. Just really safe for that man. Trigger finger ish hand. It's either for the grapple launch, grapple grapple launcher, or or a batarang, or the grenade launcher. <laughs> I just don't know. But yeah, you get that. And the right hands are the more interesting ones. Uh, yet yeah, this one, which is on show, is very interesting. This is the hand for the bat brand. And what you do is take the bat brand and just slide it in. And that, ooh, ooh, no. Okay, you slide it in, then just swing the swing the bat brand up, and there you go with the bat brand. Very nice, very very nice. So you can just like bat brand criminals everywhere. Very cool. And you get uh, two extra pairs of hands. I'm assuming this is also a trigger finger hand for the grade launcher or for the grapple launcher. And this one finally is for the batter ends. I'm assuming this is a very tight grip. So I think what you would do is you take the batter end, you put it in this hand here, or like here. Yeah, I, I guess it's here. Oh, here. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, put it here. Very nice. Like it's throwing a batter. Very, very cool. Alright, so let's take all of the accessories aside and we'll take a look. Oh, wait! Oh, whoa, whoa. one more thing I totally forgot to do before uh, moving on to the accessories. These are the extra face parts. Silly me. So, you get four face parts. You get two sets of eyes. So, one eye is looking off to the side, right there. It was a very nicely painted. And then, painted off to the side. And one eye is, I think, looking a very, looking very serious, a very blank face. I can't tell, unless I put on the face. Yeah, very nice. And you get two face plates. One is So you, know, you can do a whole like grimacing Batman. The one is slightly serious like And to go with the face plate, well you have these face plate removables. Okay, so what you want to do is grab your Batman head sculpt right here. Let's take the tool and there is a space right here and you're supposed to uh, you're supposed to be able to poke it out so just like the previous uh, review we have which is Batgirl 
what you want to do is you take this here, then you take it inside, and there's this would be an area. If you'll feel it, you just push, and then you'll be able to take the face plate out. So this is the relaxed face. You want a more grimacing Batman? Like, do you bleed? You will. This Batman here, and you just pop it in. And there you go, lovely jubbly. Right, and take the face plate out again. What we do, we do is, again, just sort of feel around it, push it out. And it'll make it a lot easier. Push, ooh. Yeah, let me put this back on. There you go. Oh, what's nice about these, uh, these face plates is that they have these soft foam pads so you don't like scuff the paint inside or anything and the other one i want to discuss is the extra set of eyes now they're a bit of a bit more of a hindrance to take out because you have to use this part of the tool so what you would do is you go around here and you see there's this section right here you have to catch it with this so you just poke this in then you pull. You pull the eye socket out, and you should be able to extract it. Here, um, some of the parts are a bit jammed in there, but that's okay. Uh, we'll figure out some other time. But you know, you can see sort of what you would look like because you you're not seeing much. These are these would be pretty cool if you could actually get it on. But I'm not gonna damage this figure since uh, this is a pretty old one. So yeah, you know, pretty cool bunch of accessories, and uh, yeah, pretty fitting for for Batman. So let's uh, take a look, go take a look at the figure itself, shall we? Let's. Right. Yeah, let's take a look at the Batman Batfleck here, and oh wow, um, very impressive. I mean, uh, <laughs> I really love this guy. And well, one of the reasons why I never got him in the first place is because I was very worried about the materials. But not a lot of the reviews that I've watched actually discuss what's used in this. Uh, for example, the suit. I was always worried that it was actually just rubber suit. But no, actually this is a fabric material. Like it's a very nice fabric with some paint printing overlay. And it doesn't hinder articulation at all. Which is really, really nice. And the cape as well. Uh, the cape is uh, has a it's it's a fabric, and the back, but on top is this sort of leather-like material, like very hard fabric material. Uh, I can't see what it is. <laughs> it it just feels weird uh, to me. Yeah, I'm not worried about longevity. I guess this doesn't feel like leather. Almost, but you know. Uh, that's up to Hot Toys and this figure to decide. But yeah, um, pretty good, pretty good. So let's take a look at the painted sculpt on this. And yes, very nice paint work on the figure. Very stubbly Ben Affleck. He's very serious. Very serious Ben Affleck. Batman. With the nice short ears, which is uh, reminiscent of the Dark Knight Returns Batman from the Frank Miller comics. Very nice. Also, the bat logo is the Frank Miller Batman logo. It's very big bat, very broad, very wide. Again, it's really nice, really nice. And also, the paintwork also nicely extends to the belt, which is this very nice little weathered gold with all these chips and scars right there. Really, really nice. Let me just look at them. The detail of is really nice. Really nice. I painted all the way to the back here as well. But yeah, you know, really nice. And even the even the gauntlets. The gauntlets are a nice gold. See here? Very nice faded gold. But yeah, really nice, really nice. And paintwork extends also to the cape. You can see the cape here has a really nice weathered look at the bottom. See here, black and then does this brown brown applied to the bottom of the cape. Which I find really, really cool. Right. And, well, let's look at the boots. Boots are a bit 
scuffed as well yeah it's very nice and it complements the sculpt very nicely as well just look at the abs look at the muscle look at this bat butt worthy of joel schumacher yeah very nice very nice musculature i mean the boots are sculpted also in this very nice little uh with these very nice little leather marks but they're not leather they're plastic but they're sculpted to look like they're leather really nice look at all the minor freckles and everything very very cool and the bottom you get the treads as well really nice really nice and i do love this batman suit which is pretty cool you know something a bit more traditional uh batman suit because before this uh we've always had like armor or very thick black uh, most uh, like if you grew up with the Keith Let's and Batman, or the Val Kilmer Batman, or the George Clooney Batman, uh, it's always been this uh, sort of main black suit, and I like that. There's sort of they try to bring more of the comic look into this Batman with the gray suit, which is pretty nice. You know, last time I got a gray suit Batman was uh, in live action was Adam West. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. So yeah, that was really old. That was like 50 years before this movie was even made. So it's really nice, you know, a return to old designs. So yeah, let's take a look at the articulation. And I do love the articulation on this figure. Uh, you get the head, which is on a fixed fixed joint because this cowl is one piece, not two piece like the, uh, Dark, Knight, the Dark Knight Batman. So you can only go this far, this far. It's still pretty good for the posability, but I guess if you want the best results, you do it like Heath and Bats or Rapkin, which is you want to move a bit to the side, the whole body turns. But yeah, this is pretty nice posing, up and down, but really tight joint. I think it's on a ratchet. I feel the gears a bit. Yeah, on a ratchet, very nice. And it goes down as well. Very nice. Look up pretty far. But it breaks the sculpting of the suit quite a lot because the cowl isn't stuck to it, which is a bit disappointing. I think that we should have figured a better way to actually do the, the cowl. But yeah, you know, you get tilt again, but it breaks the sculpt by quite a bit. So I'd recommend you do that a lot. Then I think you can turn it to the side. I already turned it. But yeah, you know, um, articulation was on the head. Uh, you can get a lot of possibility out of it, but uh, just the slightest turn can break the skull, which is a bit disappointing for me. But yeah, uh, let's move on to the arms. The arms, very nice. They are on, I think they were ratchet. yeah. The elbow's on a soft ratchet. Let's try to move this arm. Ooh, ooh yes. So you can go that far. And because the fabric's pretty loose, surprisingly, I can get a lot of good poses out of this guy. So you can extend this pretty far up, but I don't recommend it again. Long term, you might start stretching it, but this is fabric, so it can take a bit of that punishment. But like, again, like I've always stressed, don't try to force these things. You might break something. You know, really nice, really nice. And the uh, bicep joint, which is very cool. Again, you can get a lot of good posing out of this. This is a, this is a fabric suit, so you don't have to worry about anything breaking. So yeah, you can get a lot of good bicep. I think you can get full 360, but yeah. Yeah, pretty good bicep joint on this. Kind of really cool. And the elbows on a detented uh, ratchet. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, that's as far as they go. So five ratchets. Again, not a good double bend, but still pretty good single bend joint out of this. This is pretty cool. And you get a wrist swivel and a pivot. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So yeah, you know, pretty good articulation in the hands, which isn't hindered anyway by the suit. So let's take a look at the uh, the torso. Torso has some rubber padding, like fake muscles. So be careful; it might hinder. So you get a uh, waist rotation, but pretty limited again because of the padding underneath the suit. Uh, you get a torso swivel right here, but then again, it's limited. So again, like a bit, it's like this. So yeah, I don't really want to try to force this. This isn't mine. And you can go here again as well. Pretty nice. You get some pose build out of this. And then you get to go up 
you can't go up. So there's no, I don't see, a, I don't feel an app crunch. So yeah, I don't know. It's restricted by the, by the, by the padding on here. Bit disappointing, but it's a lot Let's take a look at the legs, the legs. You can give you a full articulation on the leg. Uh, you can't go that, f you can go a bit higher, I think, but uh, the suit is trying to fight me a bit and I don't want to force it. That's pretty cool. Again, leg can get a full double bend of the knee, I think. Yeah, full little bend of the knee right there. Really nice, really nice, really nice. Oh, yeah, and you get the ankle. Ankle is on a, well, sort of a, on a boot cut. Uh, ankle can go this far, go that far, go up and down. Pretty nice, and you can go around because it's on a ball joint, free floating ball joint. Just pretty cool. So, a lot of cool posability in this figure, but unfortunately, you're hindered by a lack of, uh, well, mostly the main torso hinders you by quite a bit. So, uh, maybe if you can find a way to modify this, I mean, this figure is pretty old. Uh, maybe you could, but I'm not gonna do it because this isn't my figure. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so far, I like, I like, I like this figure. Uh, Posability wise, he isn't up to snuff though. It's just the, this one really breaks the sculpt. Like when you actually try to move anything <laughs> uh, on the head, especially. But yeah, you know, so far, like, he's all right. It's pretty good, pretty good. So uh, let's, oh boy, yeah, you know, this is breaks the sculpt. So you got to actually have the re head rest at a certain angle. Let's say get him out of the way. Let's get some of his uh, fellow DC compatriots, shall we? Let's get him next to my, the DCEU Superman. Uh, this is my Justice League Superman. And he tell, uh, no, they're about the same height. Yeah, they're about the same height. Just pretty nice. Pretty, pretty nice. So you can, so figures don't uh, mess up too much in terms of scaling. Yeah, they nicely contrast each other very well. I mean, the dark grays and the blacks. Very, very nice. Wonder Woman, Diana Prince. The comic book color version. She's really cool. They match up pretty nicely together, wouldn't you say? Pretty nice. Again, bright colors contrast really well with his dark persona visage. And let's bring out a cat-themed superhero. Well, hero, not anti-hero. Uh, <laughs> you thought it was going to Catwoman. Nah, it's Black Cat. Closest I can get to right now. Yeah, it's pretty, she's pretty nice. Pretty nice. They see scales pretty well with back fleck. A bit shorter. Yeah. Ooh, one more. The previously reviewed Arkham Knight Barbara Gordon Batgirl. Um, she stands about a couple of inches taller than Barbara, which is interesting. But yeah, you know, they, they would pair pretty well together uh, if you want to make a whole Bat Family collection. And I'll uh, get one more money shot. Let's get this. Let's just try it. Let's try it. Oh, here he is. Go. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, you're not seeing it here, but like, this is great. Uh, yeah, the DCEU Trinity together. And what a shot it is. I'm just, I'm just, let's just get Batman in a cool pose as well. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't this a beauty? This is pretty nice. <laughs> so, yeah, finally, that pretty together. Pretty cool, even though Batman isn't from my collection. But, yeah, um, <laughs> this is pretty good. So, uh, final thoughts on this figure. Um, I do give him a recommend if uh, you can find it for a good price. I'm pretty sure aftermarket and this guy's gonna be quite a lot more expensive, especially considering uh, considering this figure's age. And I don't have the Justice League Batman, so I can't comment on that figure. But yeah, you know these is pretty good. And unfortunately, uh, I would have loved to see Hot Toys do this in combo colors, just like this Wonder Woman. Gray and blue would have been pretty cool to see, but unfortunately they never made it, but hey. But yeah, I do give them recommend. If you can find it for a good price, or I'm guessing the Justice League Batman is the same mold, you find that one for a good price, I mean, give it a go, right? This is a fabric suit. It's gonna take, it's gonna last a long time. 
unless you do something to mess up the stitching. Um, Possibility wise, he's pretty good, except from that disappointing uh, ab section because nothing moves. And I'm just worried about the cape. I'm not sure what material this is. This isn't leather. Uh, it doesn't feel like a rough fabric. So try it out in the comments if you know what this material is and if it will last a long time. But yeah, you know, this is a pretty good figure and I give it a recommend. And if you're a fan of the Ben Affleck Batman or Batman fan in general, fan of DCEU, hey, give this figure a go. It's a complete collection, you know? These guys go wonderfully together. I do give it a recommend. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this review. We'll see you all in the next episode. And remember, save Martha!